Have you ever experienced this common hydro dipping problem? Whoa, 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 hold on, don't, don't go nowhere, come back, come back, no! Dang it! Don't worry, we've all been there at one point in our hydro dipping careers. In this video, I'm gonna show you some really simple ways that you can keep this from ever happening and you'll never have this problem ever again. Stick around, show you how we do it. Welcome to ATF Hydrographics and another edition of our video series that we like to call Just the Tip, where we give you guys at home great tips and tricks on how you can become a better DIY hydro dipper. Now, if you've been hydro dipping for a while, you may be like, no, duh, I know how to fix this. Stick around and watch the entire video. You might actually learn something. But for you new folks and beginners, let's go into why you're having this issue and then show you some simple solutions on how you can fix it. So hydro dipping films like this are designed to absorb water. Once they absorb enough water and they become fully hydrated, you spray your activator over the top of it. That turns it into a liquid and the ink will stick to your painted part. When this film is just sitting on the water and hydrating, soaking up water, it will stay together just fine. But as soon as you spray activator on it, it's going to turn this nice sheet of film into a liquid. And without something to hold all of that liquid into place, it's going to do exactly what you saw in the intro and probably like you've experienced, it's just going to start floating away. Now what a lot of people do and one of the huge mistakes that I see people do is to keep it from floating away, they grab their tape and they start taping all four sides of this film up to try to keep it together so that it's not flowing all over the place. And then you wind up with a piece of film that looks like this that is taped on all four sides. Now while you can get away with this, sometimes it is not the proper way to do it and there's some extreme disadvantages to taping on all four sides. If you want to see an in-depth video about why you shouldn't tape on all four sides, I'll leave a link to it right up here. If you haven't watched it, definitely go check it out. But for the sake of keeping this video as short as possible, just don't tape all four sides of your film like this. I'm going to show you two different methods that I like to use for keeping film from, you know, spreading all over the place when you go to activate it. Now, both of the methods that I'm going to show you can be used either on, you know, your little Rubbermaid totes if you're dipping from home, even small homemade takes, all the way up to big professional style hydro dipping tanks. Now, in a big professional hydro dipping tank, we use what's called a dam system. This is just a stainless steel bar that I can slide back and forth to whatever size of film that I'm putting on the wall. Now for keeping the film from moving side to side, we use these aluminum dams that have a hook on one end. They go over the center crossbar and I can pull it into whatever size I need and then I can adjust the width from here however long my film is cut. And I have them in all different sizes for different lengths of film and I've probably got about 20 or so different sizes that I use on a regular basis. Now this setup really is the ultimate in adjustability and this is more for professionals because making all these different size dams and having this big tank gets really expensive. Now I don't have a Rubbermaid tote to show you so we'll just use this and pretend this is you know your Rubbermaid tote tank that you have built at home. Now this first method I'm going to show you for making your own dam super cheap and super easy just involves some regular old masking tape. You don't have to buy expensive masking tape. You can buy a Walmart brand, whatever, cheap, it does not matter. But what you're going to do is, let's just say your tote is about this wide. Take a length of tape that is longer than your actual tote. If your film is floating in one direction, just start on that side and run your tape all the way to the edge and then over on this other side. Now the key here is you don't want to lay the tape over the film. You want the tape to be just at the edge of the film. If it's got a little small sixteenth or a quarter of an inch gap, no big deal. Then you're going to take another long piece of tape and do the exact same thing, making sure not to lay the tape over the edge of the film. You want the film to be able to move side to side just a little bit. Then you're going to take two more pieces of tape and lay them in the opposite direction to hold your film in place. And there you go, you've made you some really easy dams with tape. Now when you go to activate, your film will stay inside of that taped area and not spread all over your Rubbermaid tote. Now this allows the film to stretch and kind of move in with your part as you're dipping something through it. If you'll watch here, the film actually will fall all the way through.
And then the way we do this with our aluminum dams, or if you want to make your own out of PVC pipe, I've seen people do it out of pool noodles. You can do it with all kind of different stuff. I like to make my dams out of aluminum. I don't have to worry about them rusting, and it's a little bit cheaper than doing it out of regular stainless. And same thing with the tape. You don't want the actual dams to be squished up against the film. You don't want to have any, you know, kind of cracking and where it's kind of folding up on itself like that. You want to have it just a little bit to the outside, give it just a little bit of room to expand out. And like over here where it's got that little bit of a gap because the film started to kind of roll up, no big deal. Just leave it like it is. The other great thing about using adjustable dams like this is if you get up here, you've got your film all squared away, you're ready to go, you're about to dip, you get your part and you look and it's maybe going to touch one of these two edges, you can always just come back and open these dams up just a little bit and that will allow the film to stretch out just a hair when you go to activate it so that you can get your part to fit down in there. This comes in really handy for me because I dip a lot of parts every day and sometimes I'm just not paying attention. I cut the film the wrong size and I need just that little bit of extra. If I was using the tape method of taping all four sides or using the tape dams across each side and in the front and the back like in a Rubbermaid tote like I showed you previously, I would not have the ability to adjust this on the fly. And then when we go to activate, all the film stays contained within this dammed area. Now take this old speed shape that's already been dipped, give this a quick shot, pull it out of the water, and then I can move this dam, take this one, move all my film out of the way, and I'm ready to go for the next dip. That actually looks kind of cool with the uh, We The People underneath Cryptek. We might have to explore that more in another video. Now, if you're going to be cutting really, really large pieces of film, I'd say something about like this, a full meter width. I highly recommend, if you're going to use the tape method to make your dams, to hold all of that film into place, put two layers of tape on each side. Reason being is if you go to activate and your spray gun or your aerosol can gets a little bit too much activator on the edges of that tape, you're gonna wind up with an issue like this. On this particular dip, I was in a rush and did not pay attention. I forgot to put two layers of tape down. After I got done activating, I walked over to grab the part that I was gonna be dipping and by the time I got back, that tape had already broken away and all of my pattern was going floating across across the tank. So if you use a big pieces of film, two layers of tape, always. Don't be that guy. Nobody likes that guy. But if you do it, make sure that you, you got it on video so that you can put it on TikTok because everybody thinks that's hilarious. Now, another thing I see and something I get comments and questions on all the time is can you tape film on just two sides to help it stay in place? I know there's a lot of people on YouTube that do that and you've probably seen it on Facebook groups and internet forums all over the place. Personally, don't recommend anyone do this. But the reason that most people go this route and you see this is because they're having trouble with their film wanting to roll up on the edges when they get it off of the roll. There's a easy way to get this stuff in the water that doesn't require the use of tape and the time that it takes to tape something up. I'll leave a link to a video that I did right up here that will tell you all about it. But my opinion is always going to be never put tape on your film at all. You, you don't want to put two sides or four sides, no tape at all on the film. You'll get much better dipping results that way. Now, if you've watched 11 YouTube videos and you're YouTube certified at hydro dipping, you do whatever it is that you want to do and make your little heart go pitter patter. And you can also go down in the comment section like everybody else and tell me that I am wrong. For those internet experts, keyboard warriors, you do you. Whatever makes you happy. Happy, I don't care. But if you want my advice, beginner friendliest method is not to tape your films. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. I'll be glad to answer those for you. Don't forget to check out our wonderful channel sponsors. I've got discount codes and links to them down in the description box. Also down there in the description section, I've got all the information about our online training if you are interested in that. I want to give a big shout out and special thank you to all of our patrons over on Patreon. Those are the ones that allow me to get on here on YouTube and do these videos for you guys. So thank you very much to each and every one of my Patreon members. And if you're interested in Patreon, I've got the link to that down in the description box below as well. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's roll the bloopers. I don't care what Jim Bob on the internet says. Do not tape all four sides of your film. Why does that make me so angry? It shouldn't. I need to go take some anger management classes. If you're interested in any of the, uh, any, if you're interested in any of it, that you can use to correct this issue. Correct this issue. I have issues that need to be corrected. I have to worry about it going all over the place after you. 
Have you ever experienced this? Why, why do I have to talk with my hands so much? Welcome to ATF. <coughs> <coughs> It's pollen season. Ugh. Got links to them down in the um. Here we go with the ums again. We're we're back to ums. We we were good for a while, but we're we're back to the ums.